Hi there. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about different polymers and where they are used in medical devices. So specifically focusing on, on polymer families. So the first type of polymers that I'm going to talk about are polyethylenes. Uh, so polyethylenes, we know, we see it everywhere. It's plastic bags, uh, plastic sheeting. We might be familiar with this recycling polyethylene sign. Um, and in particular, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is used in medical devices. So poly polyethylene itself is used for different implants, artificial tendons and ligaments, vascular grafts, uh, dentures and facial implants. It's very inert, it's very stable and is tolerated very well by the body. So it's probably one of the most common types of uh, polymers used in medical devices. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene then, as the name suggests, uh, because of the, the high molecular weight, it is even more stable. Um, it's got great wear resistance. It's used in finger joints, dentures, and of course, um, acetabular cup linings in total hip replacement um, and the lining in knee replacements as well. So PVCs are the next type. We've mentioned them already in relation to catheters. Um, very much they're used for tubings, um, gastrointestinal segments, the flexibility, a heart, ear part, so, so components where you need some flexibility. And we know PVCs from, um, we can buy them off the shelf, um, that it's in clothing um, and different tubing that we are aware of. Um, epoxies are a different type of polymer, they're used in dentures, resins, uh, they're a thermoset, um, so they once set, set uh, they cannot be remoulded. So epoxy resins would be used in medical device manufacturing. So the next set are polyurethanes. Uh, these can be foams, so they're used in facial prosthesis, bones and joints. They are can be used in biodegradable sutures. Uh, another application of polyurethanes in, in what another industry would be surfboard. So a a foam with a good fatigue life. So hydrogels are the next family of uh, medical devices and are um, they are a swellable polymer network. So they're prepared by cross-linking polymer chains by irradiation or chemical means and then the, uh, the, the chain swell with water. So in terms of medical devices the most widely used is polyhydroxyethylmethacrylate or FEMA, and this is used in contact lenses, drug delivery, wound healing, artificial kidney membranes. Um, so areas where water contact is, is important and swellability is important. So uh, FEMA and PMMA are two examples. Uh, polypropylene, we came across this when we talked about hernia mesh repair, um, and the, the picture I have here is of a knitted polypropylene. Their physical properties are very similar to polyethylene, so again, very stable, uh, very inert, um, but they have a very high flex life, uh, which makes them very good uh, for, for molding, knitting, braiding. So these types of intricate medical devices. They have an excellent environment for stress cracking. They can be used in things like finger joint prosthesis because they have good stress resistance, high flex life. They're used in syringes, blood oxygenator membranes, again for the flex life, packaging, sutures, vascular grafts, and non-woven fabrics. Uh, so polystyrenes then are a, they would be a harder type of plastic, and um, they would be thermosetting. Uh, usually you'd see them in lab wear, so these tissue culture plates, filter units, and more tissue cultures, that's where you'd see polystyrene in medical devices. Um, they're usually injection molded. There's three grades as a general purpose polystyrene, a high impact polystyrene and a foam. Um, so as I said, filter wear and tissue culture is where they're used um, and the foams um, can be used in other medical devices. So pure polystyrene is hard and brittle and you can get a sense of that from where it's used. Um, but a type of polystyrene, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene copolymers, or ABS, um, these are the, the hard 
uh, polymers that you would see Lego bricks made out of. So if you can imagine a Lego brick that's made out of ABS. Um, so it's very, very tough. Um, by changing the ratio of the monomer properties, it can be altered and it can be made to be very tough. So it's used a lot in IV sets, blood dialysis and some diagnostic kits. Um, and and in, as I showed in the previous slides for um, tissue culture wear that does have a uh, toughness. So polyesters are the next uh, family and we would be familiar with, with polyester clothing. Um, so if you think of, of the properties of, of those clothing then um, that transfers pretty well into the properties of polyesters for medical devices. They can be knitted or woven um, they have a high melting point, a high tensile strength. Um, there are some trade named po uh, polyesters on the market. So Dacron is a trade name and it's used in vascular grafts. So great flexibility. It can be woven um, and very well tolerated by the body. So it's also used in suture. It would be a big suture material, catheter housings, heart valves, meshes and ligament reconstruction. Um, they're hydrophobic, um, so um, are good for um, deterring proteins and can be molded. Uh, so polyurethanes are the next class. These react um, with the monomer containing diisocyanate groups and a monomer containing alcohol groups give polyurethanes. Um, they're used in wound dressings, dialyzers, and uh, for research as well. Um, why they would be used for dialyzers and wound dressings, um, they have a, a high flexibility and a high elongation at break, uh, which means they can be stretched considerably. So acrylics um, are the next type, and we, we might be familiar with acrylic paints. Um, they are light transparent, so they've got a high refractive index. So they have a good use in things like contact lenses. They're very easily machined. Um, they can be surface coated. Uh, where they are used in medical devices, blood pumps, IV systems, membranes, contact lenses, dentures, and bone cements. Uh, so maybe we'll focus in on contact lenses and bone cements as, as two of the, the more uh, usual uses of acrylics, in particular PMMA, which is polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, so PTFE then, these are the fluorocarbon uh, polymers. PTFE, we saw this coming up in hernia repair earlier um, due to its uh, flexibility. It's linear, it's highly crystalline, uh, which means it has good mechanical properties. It's a high melt temperature, stiffness, very low surface tension, uh, very good for blood contacting devices because of the low surface tension. So it is usually used in vascular grafts. Uh, and the trade name of one of these fluorocarbons is Teflon, which is what is used to coat pans. Uh, it gives us this non-stick surface. So it's the same materials that are used in vascular grafts to stop blood sticking to the vascular graft and therefore stop uh, thrombus formation. Uh, they can be injected, molded easily and melt extruded because they're thermoplastic polymers. So nylons or polyamides are the next type, uh, nylon being a, a trade name. Um, they are, we, we know of their use in, in women's tights, in ropes, um, things that have uh, good strength. There's a very strong bond uh, between the, the monomers. Um, so they have a they're very high strength, high melt temperature, good modulus, and therefore one of their, their major uses is in surgical sutures. They can also be used in gastrointestinal segments and tracheal tubes because of their flexibility and strength. Uh, polycarbonates are a very hard type of um, polymer. They're clear, they're tough, they're used in lab wear like eyeglasses, safety glasses, housing for oxygenators and heart-lung bypass machines. Um, and you can copolymer them with polyurethane uh, to create a more stable material. 
So I'm nearing the end. The uh, PDMS are polydimethyl siloxanes or silicon rubber. Um, so I have a picture here of some bakeware that's made out of silicon. Um, they have very poor mechanical strength, uh, but great flexibility and uh, moldability. So they're less temperature sensitive than other rubbers. Um, you can have reinforced silicon, which is silica. Uh, again, very flexible. They're used in finger joints, heart valves, breast implants is their major use. Um, all reconstructive surgery um, uses really. Um, starting to have a surgeons in catheters at the moment, draining tubes, insulation of pacemaker leads where maybe a ceramic may not be used, a silicon will do a good insulation job, and membrane oxygenators as well. Okay, so that completes the section on different polymers and their uses for medical devices. Thank you.